Today on BLS TV, we're gonna talk about aquascaping the 45 gallon tank as well as fighting that Tom Bloom issue. All right, just kidding guys. All right, if you want actual information, be sure to check out BLS TV. But uh, if you just want to be entertained and see how I do with my reef tank, come take a look. All right guys, so today we are going to talk about aquascaping the 45 gallon tank. Now in the last update, you'll notice that things are really overgrown and really crowded. So I have two options. One is frag up the colony or two, add more rock work. As you can see, I opt for adding more rocks. Now, the way I approach it is that before these, the theme of this tank is minimalist. Basically, everything is really uh, really clean, uh, less of minimum rock work, and coral just kind of overtake that rock. And that worked for a while until the colony goes out of control. Uh, because I don't want to frag it up, I just add more rocks, but how do I go about it? So I went with the controlled chaos route, meaning that I will add more rock, like right here, I add a column right here, and I'll stuff it full of corals. I'm gonna grow soas and stuff on this rock. Uh, and the intention is to make things really interesting. There's like now we have foreground, middle ground, and background. Before it's like an open book. Uh, with the open book, you look at it like, okay, that's nice, okay, that's clean. But as you get cluttered, it kind of got lost. That, well, it got lost in translation. So now I decided to go with, just packed it in. But the dangerous part is that if you just haphazardly uh, packing it in, it would just look messy. So I want to have a really distinct foreground, background, and middle ground. Now you notice that there's a channel between these two rock work and this was actually inspired by the Oregon Reef. That was like a beautiful, I think it's like 550 gallon reef system. They have a beautiful website. Uh, I saw them maybe like 10 or 12 years ago and they're just inspirational. So I've always wanted to build kind of like a channel but I never thought that my reef tank is deep enough to do something like that. However, I decided to give it a try anyways. This way we can obviously get something in the foreground, in the middle ground. If some fish decide to swim through it, it's gonna look beautiful. And then in the background, we've got frog spawn, or we can insert something all the way in the back as well. Now, there are a couple, a couple bonuses that comes with uh, having a rock structure like this. Uh, to preface it, I wish this piece is a little bit skinnier. However, this is what I have, so I'm trying to work with it. Uh, so I'm trying to get something in the foreground, right? So if you look down and look past this uh, torch column, go torch, you see something swaying in the front and then in the, you see something in the back. So now we got depth, which is pretty awesome. And if you swing around to that side, we actually got to swim through. So now I'm adding a couple of different viewports of this tank, which is kind of awesome. Now another added bonus, is that if you look over here, you see the green chromis. They're kind of like crowding around the uh, yellow Fiji letter. This yellow Fiji letter is actually what prompted this aquascape change. Uh, so while I was snorkeling and diving in Philippines, I noticed that there are a lot of school of green chromis that kind of live inside. Uh, well, they live inside Acropora heads. Whenever there's people passing by or they, they sense danger, they kind of crowd into it. I really love that look and I feel like that's where they feel most comfortable. So I wanted something that's high up in the water column because obviously they couldn't go back there. Well, they're going now because uh, the clownfish is vicious defending the anemone as well as uh, the anemone will kind of sting the green, green chromis. And since they already kind of hang out in this corner, I thought it would be perfect to raise some structure up there to let them hide. And it has been working really well. The clownfish sometimes do not even see the green chromis. They're not defending the entire tank as aggressively as before, even when I'm feeding the tank. Uh, probably because like the Fiji letter is really dividing the tank's territory into two pieces. Versus before, it's like one big territory that the clownfish has to defend. So it has been working out really well. The Queen Chromis seems a lot happier. Clownfish seems to be a lot happier. So those are the thought that has been going into the new aquascape. Still very much a work in progress. I plan to cover up the rock with like zoas and I plan to grow some of my pore cap on the inside a little bit to add more to the depth. So for the next bit, Sally, you probably need to uh, uh, film, film me because I got something like really serious to tell the reefers. All right, let me turn on the light and be serious for one second. Be serious. Be serious. Huh. All right, so about aquascaping, right? This is a really serious thing about aquascaping, at least for me. Those were all just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all just bullshit. So the way I've been doing it, right? It just kind of like try and error. I think it may look good, so I tried it. I was like, okay, that kind of looks good, but I don't know why. It just it just looks good. It's kind of, but uh, afterwards, I think of reason. I try to sell it. I try to sell it to myself. It's like, okay, I think this works well because it's kind of dividing territory. I think this works well because like now we got foreground, middle ground, background. It's kind of like I'm a designer, right? UI, UX, and then web designer. So sometimes I'll do design because it looks nice visually, but I cannot 
at that time pinpoint exactly why until I sit down and look at it and try to reason with myself. It's like, oh, I think this worked because of this, because of this, because of that. So I guess that is one way to do aquascape or even approaching design. It's not the smartest way. Uh, I know like they're genius designers like Sally behind the camera right here who can be like, I know this is gonna look good because of this reason. But sometimes I just have to like play around things a little bit. And when I get it, I try to understand like, oh, why does it work? And can I kind of build on it and go somewhere even push it a little bit more? So that's my approach to aquascape. Uh, lots of trial and error. And then once I find something that I think, oh, it may work and I try to convince myself, does it work? If I can convince myself, then I think, okay, maybe that is a good design, then let's go with it and see how much I can push it. So that's a little bit of truth. Nobody, well, at least I'm not like an aquascape genius. I just kind of put things together, trying to, I was like, okay, I think that looks good. All right, let's see if I can sell it to myself. But there are a lot of great aquascaper out there that can just like put things together. And I wish that I can get to one of their level in the future. All right, well, with that said, let's take a look at the second issue, which you guys have probably all noticed. Look on the sand bed. We got a diatom. Is that a diatom or, uh, or dino algae? Hmm. And you also notice a bunch of uh, new cleanup crew is really due for a refresh because it has been a while. But Sally has to go, she's tired. So this part, you get me. Yay. So guys, say goodbye to Sally. Bye. All right, reverse, now that Sally's out of the house, let's talk about something a little bit dirtier. So like we showed you a little bit earlier, we have a dusting of uh, algae on the sand bed. Now, Sometimes it gets kind of hard to identify just with our eyes what this is, but I am guessing that this is diatom. Now there's a chance that this may be dino algae as well, but the telltale sign of dino is that there will be air bubble trap in there and it will be stringy, they will be like floating up. But the fact that these is, this is kind of like a light dusting on a sand makes me believe that this may be diatom. However, if you ask 10 reefers to try to identify what kind of algae this is, They'll probably give you 11 different answers. <laughs> you can uh, go online, go on some forums, or just, just, just run a Google search on like identifying between diatoms and dino algae, and you see in, a, in like a forum thread, everybody telling the original post or something different. The only sure way to really identify it seems to be putting it under microscope, which I do not have. So because I feel like this is probably diatom, I'm gonna treat it like diatom. Be, uh, either way, it does not matter because my approach towards uh, treating either diatom or dino, uh, di uh, dino algae is the same. The beginning step is always the same, so I'll go ahead and treat it. Now, before we go into treatment, I wanna tell you a little bit about how I think this came about. So, starting around July, my life got really busy because of my travel schedule. I went to Philippines um, in August, and I came back briefly, and I went to Hong Kong again. So I did not have a lot of time with, uh, to do with maintenance, which normally is okay. However, what is not okay is that I did not notice that my DI units, DI Risen, has been exhausted for a long time. So I think probably, if I have to guess, probably back in May or June, uh, the TDS out of the uh, produce water was measuring one. So I, ha I have been using a uh, water that is measuring at TDS one for a couple months already. So I think at some point it reached the breaking point in terms of like uh, the silicate it brought into the tank. Now the silicate really fueled that time bloom. So I think uh, all these excess silica has been like locked up in the system. Not to mention I made a huge mistake before I went on my trip. So let me show you my sump. So before I leave, uh, before I left in July, uh, August, I noticed that sump was really, really, really dirty. There's like hair, OG, all kind of nasties in here. And the chado's not doing too well because the chado got all those like uh, lower form LG growth on it. So it's blocking out the light, it's floating. It's, it's just a mess. So before I left, I made the <laughs> smart decision to turn down the light from, normally I run 10 hours. I turned down to four hours, right? I was like, all right, let me just let the refrigerant chill out. After I get back, I'll deal with it. So I turned it down to four hours, I never turned it back up. So what ended up happening is that after I came back, right, I was like, wait a minute, the refugium looks so clean, what happened? It was cleaning like this, it was like bare, right? It's like bare wall and the chato just sad, it's like a tiny clump. What ended up happening is that the LG in the display tank outcompeted the ones in the sump. So if you actually look up here, you see that there's some LGs on the uh, uh, gyres and it was, it was a lot of hair LG. There's still some remnants on the rocks. I'll swing over here. 
You see that there's like a little hair algae here. There's like a little bubble algae cluster right there. There used to be a little bit more hair algae on the rack as well. So it just, I was like, oh, what's going on? The things are not looking good. Uh, so I think what happened is that due to the light schedule, uh, the algae in the display tank outcompeted the ones in the sump, right? So it's kind of like a transfer everything over here. So in order to combat this, uh, first thing, like I mentioned, I switch over, I clean the, uh, I clean, well, no, I didn't clean that. I kind of cleaned out the sump a little bit. I changed out the DI cartridge of our DI units, uh, but I think like three weeks ago, so that now TDS is measuring zero. Uh, so that's the equipment side. That's the equipment side, okay? I'm using good water now. But in terms of biological side, uh, I have not refreshed my cleanup crew in at least a year. So I had like almost no sales left. Uh, so I went to my local fish store, Fantastic. They got great, great, great price on cleanup crew. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna let, uh, I'm gonna let Pass Moki tell you guys about it. So take it away, Pass, Pass Moki. Hey, thanks, Future Moki. So yeah, I just finished shopping at Fantastic. Awesome fish store. But let me show you what I got. So I picked up 14 mixed match snails. Uh, basically, it's uh, Mexican turbos, uh, estrius, and then a few margaritas. So I'm hoping that these guys will keep the glass and the rock relatively clean. Now, the margarita snails is usually a, come from a little bit colder water, so we'll see how they do. I still have two or three in my tank that have been there for a couple months, so they seem to be okay. So we will see how this batch does. To keep the sand bed clean, I got 20 Caribbean serif snails. Now, I know the Caribbean because the shell is a little bit darker. The Florida ver the Florida ones has the white shell, but for the most part, I feel like they do the same thing. And I see that one or two, actually a couple of them actually got barnacles on their shell, so they're actually pretty cool. And finally, in order to make sure the sand bed is completely turned over, uh, I actually got a sand sifter starfish for the very first time in the hobby. I've never tried these guys before. A lot of you guys really like them. Uh, so I, I, I was able to get a, this guy's about three inches and the owner, uh, Paul of Fantastic, was able to pull one of these guys out from the display tank for me. And this guy has been in the tank for quite a few months already. So he should do all right in the tank. While there, I also picked up some snails for Sally's Nano Tank. We got a couple of Mexican turbos and margarita snails, as well as a few uh, serifs. So fantastic of Frederick's quickly becoming one of my go-to fish store because of the price and the quality. Uh, I'll give you some examples, like Firefish, they, they're selling them for like $5. Yellow Watchman Gobi, $8. Uh, Troika Snails, normally online is like $2.50 or $3. They're selling for $2. Ashley is a six, I think it's like 69 cents each or 68 cents, I forget. But the price is just ridiculous and the, uh, the critters are healthy. So I find myself going back there more and more. And what's special about this time is that I actually met one of you guys. I forgot your username off the top of my head, but you know who you are. Really nice meeting you there. All right, with that said, I'm going to turn this back to Future Moki. All right, thank you, Pass Moki. Welcome back. So it has been about two days, two and a half days, and you see that um, the 20 Columbia, uh, sorry, not Columbia, the 20 Caribbean Serif snails uh, adjusting pretty well. Um, they're digging in. They're making making a difference. You notice that in my previous video, the sand bed is like red here. It's just getting a little bit crusty. But now the the diatom is kind of like confined to this side. Like the center the center part is already kind of cleaned out. Whether it's because the snails and starfish are eating it, or they're just kind of stirring the sand, I don't know. But the fact is that it's clean. Now this side. You still see the rust color diatom over here. Again, I'm just calling this diatom. It could very well be uh, dino algae. Uh, uh, so, but for the sake of uh, just me, you don't have to say both names every single time. I just call it diatom. So it has already look. It's already looking a lot cleaner. Uh, probably thanks to all the sensor right here. Now here's the thing though, um, I drop a lot of snails in here. There's a lot more than I'm comfortable with. There's 20 serif snails and then I got, I think like 14 mixed snails, some, some up here, some down there. Um, so I think like once things are under control, I'm gonna slowly pull some of the snails out and either uh, put it in the drop off tank or give it to uh, fellow reefers, just so that they're not starving. I know some people like to feed like nori sheets or extra algae is just to feed the cleanup crew but i feel like the point of cleanup crew is to maintain a balance so i'm trying to find that balance but so far things seems, seems to be working pretty well however if things started going south again if like like uh, if the cleanup crew and the uh, new audi water um, cannot uh, and also the um, turned up light schedule for the refugium cannot contain the diatom i'm gonna go with like a three-day blackout 
right? Just to knock out all the algae in the display tank uh, and give the, uh, the ones in the refugium a chance to kind of outcompete again to find a balance. Uh, if that still does not work, I think at that point, these are most likely dino because I feel like diatoms pretty easy to beat. Dino, they can be a little bit more persistent. At that point, I may invest in a cheap microscope just to make sure that we, we're dealing with dino and not diatom or, some, or even cyanobacteria, which I doubt. Uh, if it turns out to be dino bacteria, uh, sorry, if it turns out to be dino algae, then I'll probably do a five day blackout and then I'm gonna dose H2O2 at the same time like I did before. So if you look back to my older video, I think a year and a half ago, I had a pretty serious dino outbreak, but we were able to beat it, right? We were able to beat it. So I'm not worried at all. If we beat it once, we can beat it again. So I'm totally not worried. Diatoms, I feel like it's pretty easy to beat as long as the husbandry is good, which mine has been terrible. That's why we have this outbreak. Uh, Dino's a little bit tougher, but still totally beatable. So I'm gonna do an update on this tank uh, every two weeks. And I'm gonna keep, uh, keep you guys posted on what's been going on. So this time I just kind of like clean up my axe, clean out the um, DI filter of our DI unit. Uh, turn up the refugium lights hours to eight hours now I think I'm up to eight hours introduce new macroalgae right so not just relying on chados so they have options like see which one does better and also I enlisted the help of some cleanup crew that includes 20 serif snails about 14 mixed snails and then a sand sifting starfish so far things are actually looking really good this is a lot better already so I'm I'm hopeful and I'm gonna keep doing water change. I know if you have like dino, dino algae, you're not supposed to do water change, right? But I, I'm not convinced that these are dino. I feel like these are diatom. So I'm gonna keep up with my water change regimen. I'm gonna do uh, once a week versus I was doing like every other week before. So I'm gonna do that with the clean water and we'll see how it goes. So that is the latest update of this 45 gallon tank. And of course, uh, that is gonna be a um, continued project. And I know a lot of people say that uh, new bikini rocks, they leach phosphate. Uh, I, I did not have that issue uh, when I first introduced a uh, bikini rock in this tank. So I'm hoping that the trend will continue. And um, oh, by the way, I did test I did test the phosphate zero, of course, because I feel like if there's any phosphate it's being used up right away anyways. Um, so that's that. And I'll keep an eye out and I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys. Uh, sorry for the long update. I feel like I've been doing a lot of long updates. I hope you guys don't mind. Mm, with that said, I hope you guys are having a good week and I will see you guys next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. shop. If not earlier, there may be a bonus video coming out again next week in the middle of the week. So look forward to it and I'll see you guys next time.